It is the individual who makes the claim. It is the individual who has earned the right. And then when that has been achieved, if the individual in all his rightness and all his good intentions and all his wisdom does not clearly see what is necessary, then if his heart and mind are true, the vision may come. The mysterious, mystical experience comes to the individual who deserves it. And until that desert is correct, until he really has earned it, then he must beware of the hallucination. Because the hallucination exists as long as illusion governs the life of the individual. It is only when he transcends this that he is capable of becoming part, an active part, in the purpose of things. Whether he knows it or not is not important, really. The thing is that the job must be done. And what about those people who have short lives? Infant mortality. You know, people die in their teens, yes. And even if you do have a long life, even if you do live to your 100, you won't necessarily be on that journey. What if your journey started you know, in your 80s or 70s? So, you know, right. It's just not realistic for a journey like this to be accomplished in one lifetime. So I think reincarnation would necessarily be part, we should be part of it, an allegory like this. Unless it's talking about breaking away from... The well, essence of that idea is justice. Yeah, so justice for a lot of, I think for every philosopher, it, that probably is the overarching central theme is just You're looking for the ideal society. And realistically in this world, I mean, people aren't unrealistic. You're not going to have heaven where there's no toil and no labor and everybody gets along and there's no arguments and there's no pain. No, of course not. But justice is when there is harm done, which will be done. If you are harmed, will, will justice be served? Fairness. That's, that's actually the cent central theme of religion as well. Christianity, I guess Abrahamic religions, it's he heaven or hell. What is God other than a judge? That's like you ties into reincarnation. It's how you're going to, what you experience in your next incarnation is based on your previous incarnations. So justice overall is a theme. It's not as direct a theme as, as overt, as noticeable as, as the perception management, mind control aspect. But you can say it's not just about Plato's case, it's just about, that could say about the whole book Republic or even about the whole field of philosophy itself. There is probably no school in the history of Western civilization that has more profoundly affected the course of human life for the last 19 centuries than the school of Neoplatonism. I realize that this will be challenged, or might be challenged, but I think as we proceed, the facts will be clear. But you brought up Manipi Hall. When he's talking about Atlantis, the ideal land, whether it's in the East or West, he believes it's in the West, but still, for that to be a utopia, there would have to be justice this part i love this part you remind me of you too now suppose a person here to say to them oh my friends what are these wonderful numbers about which you are reasoning in which as you say there is a unity such as you demand and each unit is equal variable indivisible what would they answer they would answer as i should conceive that they were speaking of those numbers which can only be realized in thought. Then you see that this knowledge may be truly called necessary, necessitating as it clearly does the use of the pure intelligence in the attainment of pure truth. Yes, that is a marked characteristic of it. And have you further observed that those who have a natural talent for calculation are generally quick at every other kind of knowledge and even the dull if they have had an arithmetical training although they may derive no other advantage from it always become much quicker than they would otherwise have been very true he said and indeed you will not easily find a more difficult study and not many as difficult you will not. And for all these reasons, arithmetic is a kind of knowledge in which the best natures should be trained and which must not be given up. I agree. So it's like the continuation 
of learning numbers and arithmetic. Let this then be made one of our subjects of education, and next shall we inquire whether the kindred science also concerns us. You mean geometry. Exactly so. Clearly, he said, we are concerned with that part of geometry which relates to war, or in pitching a camp, or taking up a position, or closing or extending the lines of an army, or any other military maneuver, whether in actual battle or on march. It will make all the difference whether a general is or is not a geometrician. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? And I know that a lot of archaeological digs have revealed, like, if there is any chess pieces or game pieces, that those were usually high-ranking military or royalty in a lot of the archaeological findings. Mathematical calculations has played a big part in this. This is still in Plato's cave that we're talking about. <laughs> Oddly enough, the whole aspect of geometry is coming into play now and i think we need to dig further into that with plato's cave if we're going to sit down and analyze this correctly because you have game pieces you have the art of war that comes to my mind you have all these star forts that are all over the world and then you have the g for geometry that's in the masonic Emblem. Plus, sacred geometry, geometry is part of nature. Seems to, I mean, clearly the world was created by, it's created consciously. Mm -hmm. The atheistic view is like, I guess this all happened by chance. My one in like a, this crazy number of odds and boom, it all fell into place. No, it's, it's, it's just too kind. It's done with a consciousness. It was designed, which is why they have the metaphor of an architect. It literally does seem to have been an architect. Mm -hmm. So another part of also the energy grid, the ley line energy grid is part of it too. Mm -hmm. We talk about, forts being placed in specific strategic locations a lot of that has to do with ley line energy mm -hmm. and this is ancient energy and every religion even the, even the abrahamic religions they have this knowledge but they don't share it with their the members of their religions we know that because an ancient sacred site is always honored as a sacred site even when the religion changes or if it's a pagan sacred site i give like england for example St. Paul's Cathedral, even before Christianity, before even before the Romans, pre-Rome, you know, what is in modern-day Britain, it's now London. That's where Diana was married to Charles. It was considered a sacred site. Then Rome conquered the land, and they honored it as a sacred site, and they made it a temple to Diana on that location. But it was already a sacred site before Rome. Then when England became Christian and Anglican, they put St. Paul's Cathedral in that same site. That has to do with ley line energy. It's a grid. It's a, it's a grid that goes across the world. That's part of the geometry as well. <laughs>